Hello YouTube. Well, for the nine millionth time, we're going to rebuild my bedside computer. Now this time I decided to go for a solution that was a little bit more conservative of power. So, you saw how much I like the APU in the laptop I recently got, so I decided to go the same route with this particular build. I decided to get one of the AMD A-series APUs, the A10-6700. I would have gone for the 6800K, but that uses 100 watts of power and well the goal one of the goals of this build was to use less power so this is a six this one's just a little bit of a lower it's like a step below the other chip so and it's a 65 watt chip so that alone without a discrete graphics card will save quite a bit of power I've gone for a gigabyte motherboard as usual I love these things this is a socket FM2 motherboard the only thing that is that I find kind of saddening about this build is that Socket FM2 Plus is coming out in the fall. So by the time that rolls around, boards like this might be obsolete. Who knows what the backwards compatibility will be. But assuming assuming uh, AMD's track record is what it is, the, uh, the backwards compatibility will be there, but who knows. But let's check this stuff out. First, I'll, you can check out the RAM. I got decided to get some of these uh, G-Skill sticks here. Yeah. I think this is the fastest RAM I've ever bought. It's DDR3 2400. And the only reason I got 2400 is because uh, there was doing a promo on it. So I got it for somewhere in the $60 range instead of the usual 77 So that's a good deal. And the motherboard will just clock that down to either... 1866 or 2133, whichever it supports a little bit more. And there you have it. This is the APU here. And let's take a look at the motherboard. It is the model F2A85XD3H. And the A85X is the chipset there. Insist on an ultra durable motherboard for your new PC. So this supports iFinity, has the, the normal Gigabyte dual BIOS features, has a 3D BIOS, which I believe is the new uh, UEFI type of interface where you can actually click on things, has uh, all uh, solid state capacitors, which is good, you don't have to worry about leaky ones, has that humidity protected board with the new glass fabric PCBs, I like what Gigabyte's doing there, it makes these boards last a long time. The ultra, dur the ultra durable stuff is pretty awesome. So let's open this up and check it out. Get a couple of SATA cables. How many here? You get like four SATA cables. There's eight ports on the motherboard, so I guess that's fair. Manual with a CD. Multilingual installation book. Bueno. And uh, the IO Shield. Check out the board itself. Ah, oh, she's a black beauty. Ah, oh, she's a black beauty. And here is the board itself. It's one of Gigabyte's newer boards with the black PCBs, which just looks beautiful. It's got four RAM slots. There's the FM2 socket down there. It reminds me a lot of the older AMD sockets, like socket um, 754 and the other ones. It looks very similar to those. Looks like it has the same exact brackets that AMD's been using forever. So that's good. This is the I.O. I have on this board. A couple of, about three X1 slots, an X16, an X, looks like a, uh, an X4 slot actually. Wow. They should have populated the rest of those pins. And two PCI slots, one of which I will need for the wireless card, as you guys know. There are the two BIOS chips right there. And this thing has eight SATA ports, which is crazy. Of course, it's in the one build where I don't need eight SATA ports. I could use that in a server a lot more, but you know what? Whatever. Of course, it has uh, the front panel I.O. nicely labeled as usual. That's very good. Front USB 3. Four pin fan connectors. Let's check out the uh, I.O. in the back here. They give you a PS2 port, which is nice to see. Some USB. They give you VGA, DVI, HDMI, USB 3, some more USB 2 and Ethernet, 
and a full array of sound. You actually get seven, I think 7.1 out of this built-in Realtek audio, which of course is overkill for what I'm going to use. I'm just using, I still use stereo, so yeah, there you have it. Now let's take a look at the APU itself. All right, let's check out this APU. I'll unbox it at least. Now, the, the thing that I really don't like about newer AMD chips is that they give you pathetic heat sinks with uh, the newer AMD chips. They still give you, a, they give you really nice packaging. Uh, now, the packaging is actually better because you get a longer thing with the sticker in the side of it, but the downside is they give you these pieces of shit. This is actually the worst one I've ever seen. They didn't even put an AMD sticker on it like they used to. The heat sink is very thin. It is PW. It is a PWM fan though, which is good. But looks like they give you about a 70 millimeter fan, and they they give you similar type of heat types of heat sinks for the big eight core chips, bigger than this obviously, but still not big enough. I mean, a friend of mine has uh, an A8 6500, which is in the same sort of chip series as this A10 is, and even though that's a lower, even though the A8 a bit lower, lower end than this, it still doesn't cool the chip properly. The chip actually got hotter than 60 degrees quite often, which is not good for CPUs, especially ones that are rated at like 70 something uh, to be above that. And it actually came above that. So you, are, the good news is, if you use the stock heatsink, you're covered under your warranty, but you'll keep having to send the chip back because it'll keep dying. So. They they kind of lock you into a vicious cycle, so you pay, pretty much have to use aftermarket cooling these days to get any decent cooling. The Intel coolers do cool properly, but the mounting system sucks. So it, it's a trade-off with either one. It seems with AMD, the mounting system is great, but the coolers they give you are just garbage. So I will save this probably for some future date. I'm not going to use it on this build. Maybe I'll use it. Maybe I'll use it in the, in the future just to get a machine running. But this will not be used for anything long term. But the processor itself is a good one, 6700. This has 8,000 series APU graphics on it, which I think is equivalent to six or 7,000 series graphics cards. We'll find out once we uh, put the machine together, but there you have it. And of course, this is the case the uh, board and the CPU and everything else is going into. This Lee and Lee K7B case with the uh, one terabyte Western Digital Drive there and everything else and this will not include a separate graphics card so I'm going to install everything and then I'll come back alright and she's all put together just to review what's in the system I have an Ultra LSP 550 power supply these were sold by CompUSA back when they were CompUSA and uh, manufactured by Channelwell now Channelwell is not particularly well known for making good power supplies, but this one seems to have stood the test of time pretty well. Uh, I don't push it all that hard, so it should be fine. But here you go. You guys may recognize this heatsink. I used this uh, for the quad core build with that ASRock board. Uh, I tried the Hyper 212 Plus, but I think my bracket is too old to fit FM1 and FM2 sockets, and it didn't end up fitting, so I ended up using this cooler, which should do fine. I mean, if if it gets too hot, I'll just get another one. But f I think this one will do well for now. There's that uh, G Skill 24 DDR3 2400 RAM, which will only be run at 1866 on this motherboard due to chipset limitations. Now the thing that strikes me as just weird is that this board has nothing in it. This computer looks very empty without a graphics card or anything else in there. The only thing in here is that wireless card down there, that wireless end card. So everything is literally on the APU. That'll be interesting. So I think it is appropriate to go hook this up and tr install Windows. And then once I get Windows installed and everything, I'll show you guys, you know, the Windows Experience Index and all that stuff as it's working. So there you have it. One thing I thought was interesting about this board is it does still have a serial header down there. So you could still use a serial port on this board. I'm not so sure about parallel, but uh, you can definitely use serial on here. I have a little PC speaker adapter hooked in. Uh, another thing I noticed is that the, uh, the lower PCI X16 slot 
it actually has uh, pins molded in it for 8x, but it's only populated for 4x. So it would work for a raid card or an X1 card, but not much else. So there you have it. All right, let's get to installing Windows. All right, folks, we have Windows 7 installed on this machine, and just so you can see what the hardware is for yourself, it's an A10 6700 APU with the Radeon HD graphics. Uh, I forget exactly which graphics it is, but I'll put that as a subtitle here. Uh, 3.7 gigahertz, turbo is 4.1 or 4.2. 8 gigs of RAM. I've delegated uh, 1 gig to the video, actually. You can you can go to uh, in the BIOS and delegate up to 2 gigs of memory to the video. It uses your RAM in order to do that. Uh, so, there you have it. So, I gave it a gig, because I'm not going to be using a whole lot. So, that'll work fine. And I did the uh, Windows Experience Index scores here. CPU gets a 7.3, which is pretty darn good. Memory gets a 7.3 as well. Graphics get a 6.8, and gaming graphics get a 6.8, and the hard drive gets a, a 5.9. Now, the gaming graphics getting a 6.8 on what something that's built in to a CPU, in, built into a CPU, is great. Onboard graphics, 6.8, wonderful. So I'm very happy with that. And I did test out uh, Second Life on here already, just to see what the 3D performance was like, and it was very smooth, just walking around. So, very, very pleased with the performance of this. That's really the extent of what it'll be running. It'll Most of the time, it'll just be YouTube videos. And this is with a 65-watt chip. So, this saves a lot of power, and I'm very happy about that. That'll lower the electric bill. That will, And it's just generally better to use less power out of your machines. It's just a good thing. So, there you have it. The temperatures of this machine are pretty good. Uh, it idles at about 37 to 40 degrees on this cooler I'm using, that uh, that heat sink that came with my Athlon X2 6000 Plus from back in the day, uh, that stock heat sink with the heat pipes on it. That With that on it, it idles at about 37 to 40 degrees, and when I had Second Life open, uh, it was idling, or idle, when, it, when I had Second Life open and it was pushing the graphics, it was up to maybe early early to mid 50s in the temperatures and that's good enough for me honestly as long as it's not above 60 it's fine so i'm pretty pleased with this setup uh the apu apus in the desktop are very very good and i'm very happy with uh with what i chose so there you have it now let me go into the bios and show you the bios this is the fancy 3D BIOS you get with this board. Look at that. You can actually go to a part of the motherboard, click on it, and, you know, basically control that area. Like, there's the CPU and RAM stuff. There's the uh, all the I.O. stuff. The BIOS stuff under the uh, Southbridge heatsink for some reason. And then your, all your SATA stuff is over there. So, if you they, they tried similar stuff to this in the 90s with... Uh, some older laptops I've seen, but it wasn't quite this nice. But me, I prefer advanced mode, so I go down to the advanced button here. And you get all the old stuff again, just like a text BIOS, which is what I prefer. So, there you have it. Like I was saying before, the uh, CPU idles, or the APU idles at around 41, 40C. Um, I have to run the RAM at 1600 megahertz because the board freaks out if you put it any higher than that probably due to either CPU or uh, chipset limitations. The chipset can do 1866, but I guess the CPU just doesn't want to do it. So I'm running DDR3 2400 at 1600. <laughs> so whatever, you know, I don't care. It'll run just the same. Uh, there, it set the time. I had to set the time and everything earlier. BIOS features. What I did for this board, uh, since it's a UEFI board complete for most of it, I, tu I turned all these settings on legacy so that it boots like a regular BIOS would since I'm using Windows 7. And Windows 7 does not support UEFI booting all that well. Windows 8 supports it very well, but Windows 7 does not. So if you're going to install Windows 7 on a board this new, I would suggest putting boot mode in legacy and storage boot in legacy and just 
put all the stuff in legacy mode so it's not, you know, part of the secure boot UEFI type of thing, and uh, it'll run better. I also turned uh, AHCI off and stuff like that. So, there you have it. I left stuff like legacy USB support on. So I'm using it like I've used motherboards for the past eight years, basically, by using all the legacy modes. So I'm pretty happy with that. So far, this build has gone without a hitch, and I am quite happy. The only actually the only hitch was the the uh, the Hyper 212 Plus, but that's really been it. Other than that, this build has been pretty successful. I'm pretty happy with the end result. Uh, after testing the 3D performance, I am definitely satisfied. I'm not going to be doing any heavy gaming on here, but I think uh, this board will last me for a good couple of years. Uh, the only downside is that FM2 Plus is coming out uh, later this year, so I don't know how obsolete this board's going to be. I don't know what the backwards compatibility of that's going to going to be. It's kind of up in the air, but either way, I shouldn't really have to touch this machine all that much. I mean, it, it's fine the way it is for a while, so there you have it. So, that was the, compute, the new computer build for the bedside computer, and... I think the best I think this one's going to stay the way it is for quite a while because th this setup I'm very happy with one that uses very little power yet gives me the performance that I need at the same time. With that, I bid you adieu. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one everybody. Ciao.